Jess Tips, sharing a cup of tea with our international snooker referee and marketing technology copywriter, Kevin Dubrovsky. Uh, we're going to talk about snooker, given last weekend, and also Kevin's latest report. Now, Kevin, what? How, how do you how do you become an international snooker referee? Well, at first, I didn't plan on becoming an international snooker referee. I wanted to play snooker. So, uh, <clears throat> but at first, I wasn't really that good. So I was playing at my local club. I was doing some 30 breaks, but I couldn't really compete on the national level. But I still wanted to be involved. So I decided to do a refereeing course uh, in Poland. And then I got the chance to referee at a few national snooker tournaments like the national championships. It was very interesting. I met some interesting people. I learned a lot. And But then all of a sudden I got good enough at snooker so I could play at these tournaments and I just kind of forgot about my refereeing papers. And then a few years later when I was playing at a professional tournament and I lost in the first round, which wasn't very surprising because I wasn't that good, but it still was a lot of fun. Uh, World Snooker approached me because they lost a referee who got sick and they needed somebody who was going to replace him. So since they've heard that I got some refereeing papers and I also had some minor international experience from a few years ago, I decided to jump in and I just stayed. So that's that's the entire story. Have you have you refereed matches with with Ronnie over Sullivan and all the all the other you know superstar players? Yes, luckily I got that chance, and uh, for the couple, yeah, for a couple of years now, for two or three years, I've been refereeing frequently at the uh, top tournaments at snooker. Uh, I'm still waiting to do a Crucible debut, so I didn't get that, that excitement you were talking about uh, from last weekend, at least not personally. But I'm hoping to get that chance soon. Oh, fantastic! Is, is snooker big in Poland? Uh, yes and no. When it comes to watching snooker, it's very big. It's actually the second biggest sport on Eurosport right now in Poland. So mm -hmm. it's it's very popular when it comes to fan base and, and watching it at home. But it, when it comes to playing, it was more popular in the past. We had some very good top amateur players in Poland who were knocking in maximum breaks and were winning gold medals in uh, at European Championships, but right now we only have a few very good players. But for some reason, uh, the the player base got smaller. So, okay. so it's stay. I would say it's still pretty big overall, but it's shrinking for some reason that nobody understands. Is it true that uh, snooker referees are incredibly serious people? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I've got I've got some more questions I'd love to ask. We should talk, you know, I know you, you want to talk about your report um, around technology development um, in Poland right now. But I, I just, to, just to put it into context, if I may, um, you know, Oliver Bernard uh, interviewed um, and, and pushed a questionnaire out to to hundreds of CTOs, uh, the report the report was called "The Effects of COVID-19 on the Tech Industry and Working Practices," um, and they had a, they had hundreds of responses. And there's three key points that that came out of that, um, and I'll, I'll put the link to the report on this as well. Um, Thirty-six percent of UK businesses already utilise nearshore offshore teams. 72% will, will be considering it moving forward. That's 57% of those that didn't previously are now considering it. So um, some big numbers there. I mean, we, we PGS, we, uh, we really, we mainly work with UK companies and we, um, you know, we're there to kind of drive them push them forward and and to enable them to be as successful as possible but they they all have that they all for me they fall into two boxes i mean they all have their own software development teams who are either absolutely excellent 
or very good but need some but have some areas to improve and we we fit nicely in with both of those in in different different types of flexible engagement models but it's about working with the excellent guys but also helping um he helping progress and, and and the the guys that could be improved the teams that could be improved so you know could you could you give us the the, the key points from your report please Kevin? Yeah, sure. I think there are a few main reasons why uh, international companies decide to develop the software in Poland. I suppose the most important one for now is the quality. For example, the, the 2016 Hacker Rank listed Polish developers as the third best in the world and the Java developers as the best in the world. So that's, that's a big thing and it's not really a coincidence since we have a lot of developer talent in Poland right now. It's nearly half a million people. So that's quite a lot considering that Poland only has 40 million uh, people in it. So that's nearly 1% more than 1% actually of software experts. So that's uh, that contributes to, to, to this large pool and the fact that people are very, uh, very, very skilled because we have a lot of technological universities uh, these universities are free of charge, they're public, so people can attend them if, if they're just good enough, if they had good results at high school. So that's maybe a difference to some countries where studying is expensive, like for example in the US. So uh, this quality contributes to, to the craftsmanship that we in Poland offer. And that's why many companies now decide not only to do the extended teams that you just described, but also to develop a entire full solution, which we can build from scratch. And we can also help to maybe find a solution that will be suitable and not only develop it, just get an order and develop a solution. Now we can also do some consulting and find the best possible way to, to solve some uh, some needs or challenges a company may have so i would say that these are the most important things that the, but there are also other reasons why people decide to work with polish companies and that's for example a highly aligned culture and also our legal framework because right now i suppose asian countries will often be cheaper than european countries like poland or romania which is also a very big country when it comes to software development but there isn't really such a big uh, legal defense, legal security for companies from Europe, for example, from the US, because we know the, the legal system is different than our legal system. So when you're developing your software in Poland, you just have this security that you know that this is nearly the same country when it comes to the UK and the US from a legal point of view, from a cultural point of view. So it's also very good very easy to co cooperate with companies in Poland. And when it comes to PGS software, I think that part of our success is having a lot of people who are very experienced and most of all are uh, university graduates in technological, technological fields and areas. And that's always been a thing that PGS software has been known for since 2005 when the company was founded. It always had a large pool of uh, educated uh, developers who were not only able to develop software, but also to design it and find the best solutions. And I think that's just uh, the way PGS works. And we can say that good people love to work with other good people. That's why it just grows and, and has become what it is in terms of craftsmanship. Okay, cool. No, thanks, Gary. I'll, I'll, I'll put the link to that report at the end. I mean, for me, it's all about it's all about the simple things, about people, how they approach doing stuff together, how easy they make it. You know, ease of communication, ease of ease of getting together, all that all that kind of good stuff. Um, okay, so back to back to snooker. What is the biggest match you've ever refereed? Uh, I don't think there's one match I can name uh, because every match is different and sometimes a match that doesn't involve the most famous players can be 
both difficult, challenging, and 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 uh, in the end uh, can learn you uh, can can teach you more than than a very big match on TV because matches on TV are usually easy to referee because when you have two very experienced, very successful players, they know what they're supposed to do, and they just uh, that since it's a game where. Uh, uh, sportsmanship it's is very important it just gets very easy but if i would have to name one it would probably be the ronnie o'sullivan game against james cahill from last year in the scottish open because it only took 33 minutes and it was the fastest match ever played uh, in a best of seven distance so that was quite quite uh, difficult when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, keeping up with with the players, so that was very interesting. Are you paid to referee? Beg your pardon. Are, are, are you are you paid to referee? Yes, yes. Obviously, we we're getting paid, uh, and we, uh, we it's it's type of work, I would say. There are certain yeah. referees who do it full time, others do it part time. I'm doing it part time. That's why I can also work for PGS Software. And it doesn't really uh, get in the way of working at a technological company, refereeing, I mean. So, so yes, yeah, so it's it's also a job. What's the, what's one of the hardest things about refereeing a snooker match then, uh, a serious snooker match? In the beginning, it's knowing the rules very well and being able to react to every situation that may happen at the table. Later, it's keeping the concentration because you get used to refereeing, so it doesn't really, it's not really emotional anymore at some point, and you just need to be concentrated to be able to react to every situation that may happen. Okay. Have you ever caught any professionals <laughs> actually cheating? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's... Uh, I don't think that happens, actually. That's, uh, since uh, since sportsmanship, as I said, is very important at snooker, so I don't really think cheating happens or... or... I, I never experienced any cheating. So, so no. you, one of my last questions: You know, when you replace, respot the ball, <laughs> how? I mean, it's a big table, right? And you've got to put the ball exactly where it was. Are you using any technology, or, or is it um, all done by you know your, yourself? Yes, there is technology that is frequently used. Uh, during the biggest matches, especially on TV. So uh, the referee who's marking the match has a monitor which then shows the position before the shot and after the shot. So he can help the referee at the table to place the balls exactly where they were. It's You can get nearly spot on, so it's pretty accurate. It's just uh, like the difference is marginal and, and usually it's, it, there is no difference really. But when it comes to outside tables that don't have this, this technology, you still need to memorize every ball if you want to replace them accurately. But it's not really that difficult. If you're refereeing for a while, you get to know some tricks that you can use to remember the, the situation and where the balls were. For example, one of the... Uh, one of the tools, so to speak, I use is are some objects around the table, which I can just use as a background and see if the ball is, for example, in some way aligned towards this object or like a piece of equipment that's in the background. And then it's very easy to replace the ball looking at these, these other objects in the background. Uh, it's not advised to memorize the position of a ball towards another ball because the ball can also move and then you don't have any <laughs> perspective that you can use and then it gets difficult but overall if you're experienced it's not really that challenging again it's only a matter of concentration because you have to remember to memorize that position and sometimes uh, misses also happen in situations where you don't expect them because there's no snooker and you don't really expect a miss, but it can still happen. So you have to be ready to memorize these situations as well. Okay. And um, these matches can go on for a long time. <laughs> you're not you're not sitting down, are you? You're 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 walking around, um, and you have to concentrate for all that time. 
is do you, do you find that an issue or that because there's breaks it's okay you know it, it look it, it looks it looks quite easy but i imagine it's quite hard work when i started refereeing it was definitely hard especially uh with the concentration because matches can take four hours for example usually they take two or three hours if they're longer than uh, best of seven then there's usually a break in between if they're longer than best of 11s then the multiple sessions so uh, you also get to rest in between sessions for a few hours for example and in between uh, uh, in, during the interval you have at least 10 minutes where you can rest so in the beginning it was difficult but now it's, it's not really that difficult if you concentrate then the time just flies by and you do your job and don't really don't you really experience any downsides <laughs> okay what do you prefer doing <laughs> international snooker referee <laughs> pgs technology marketing that's, that's, probably, a that's probably not a very fair question <laughs> I, <laughs> let's I, leave, let's leave it there. <laughs> I will answer that question because uh i neither really i i I prefer having both of these things because refereeing alone wouldn't be the thing that I want to do in life. And it's just a nice thing to have, but I would rather concentrate, I suppose, on my uh, career in technology, but still refereeing is a very important part of my life. So I like to have these both things in it. Oh, brilliant. Okay, it's been brilliant. It's been brilliant having a, having a cup of tea with you. Um, yes, thank all, you very much. All the best. Cheers. Thank you very much.